Hello everybody, welcome back to our series called F5 LTM Concepts. Uh, this is the second lecture in the series that I have named F5 LTM Objects, where I'm going to discuss some of the basic F5 terminologies, um, the basic objects that we have called nodes, tools, and pool members on uh, an F5 device. Note that we are not going to touch virtual IPs in this lecture uh, because uh, we're going to dedicate a separate session for virtual IPs. That will be the next lecture in our series. So uh, let's get started. So what is a node? Uh, a node is basically an IP address uh, on an F5 device. So uh, that essentially means that whatever device, whatever machine or whatever backend server you have uh, in your network uh, and you assign an IP on that device. So that is termed as a node. For example, if I've got three different servers um, hosting the same content that I need uh, load balance to be load balanced uh, for that particular content. So I'll assign IP addresses to those three servers. So those will become my nodes on an F5 device. Uh, we'll see that in the next slide. The next thing that I'm going to discuss is the pool member. So the pool member is a node plus an application port uh, plus a service uh, that is. So for example, uh, I have a server which has an IP address. So that becomes a node. And then that server is hosting some web content on port 80 or port 443. So that means that server is a node with a port that um, because it's listening on, on some port for HTTP or HTTPS traffic. So that makes it a pool member. So as I said, there's a logical object that represents a physical node on the network uh, that is listening on a particular port for a particular service. Then we have uh, something called pool. So pool is a collection of pool members. Uh, now, pool members can be multiple servers uh, uh, in tandem. So, for example, if we are hosting some content uh, in our network and we want load balancing between uh, multiple servers for, for that same content, so we will make those uh, pool a member, make those servers a part of a pool. So those servers will be called pool members of a particular pool. We'll see that in the next slide, um, then it will get more clear. So for now, uh, just to reiterate that node is an IP address, a pool member is a node plus an application port, or we can call it a service, and a pool is a collection of pool members for load balancing the traffic. So in this example, we have a pool for HTTPS traffic. Uh, the pool comprises pool members. Uh, then we have nodes, which are essentially the IP addresses on these servers. And we have our F5 load balancer that is going to do the load balancing for these servers. Uh, it's important to note that though these servers are on different IP addresses, um, obviously private IP addresses behind the load balancer, but they should be hosting the same content. Uh, so in our example, we are uh, List, we are making these servers listen on port 443. So it means the HTTPS uh, traffic uh, will be served by these servers um, and the same content will be experienced by the users sending requests. So let's have a look at what happens when uh, a request comes in to the load balancer. So obviously we have the initial uh, at the edge, we have the initial firewalls um, that we use for filtering. So once the traffic passes all firewall checks, and if you want the traffic to go to the load balancer, so it will come here and hit this pool uh, for any HTTPS traffic. So this, the user doesn't know what is happening behind that. The user would just see a web page that the user requests for. So what happens at the load balancer is that when the traffic hits uh, the pool, the pool will send that request to any of these servers at the back end. So what F5 does is that F5 will start sending requests to server 1, it will send some requests to server 2, it may send other requests to server 3. Now how does it decide? That depends upon the load balancing mechanism. So basically the F5 is uh, doing proxy on behalf of 
the request task coming from the user. So in this way, we all we have to do is we create a pool, we uh, assign our uh, pool members to that pool, and then F5 will do the rest of, of the stuff in load balancing traffic for different servers. And in this way, the traffic is optimized uh, and our servers are not overloaded uh, for heavy uh, internet um, HTTP based content. So this is the basic idea of how F5 load balances traffic between different servers at the back end. Obviously, there are different load balancing techniques. The, the default is the round robin, wherein uh, the first request goes to server one, the second to server two, the third to server three, and the pattern is repeated then. Um, the same pattern repeats again. So uh, we'll see different uh, types of load balancing, like static load balancing and dynamic load balancing in our upcoming lectures. But for now, uh, the whole concept is that you create a node, you create a pool, then you assign pool members to your pool and then all the requests coming from uh, outside or from within your network even they will hit that pool for uh, the particular content which is https in our case and then f5 will do the rest of the stuff for load balancing based on the load balancing mechanism that we have configured on the f5 device From the configuration perspective, uh, GUI is the preferred way to do it. You can do it from the CLI as well, but uh, that is not as easy as the GUI for F5 LTM. I personally prefer GUI for configuration stuff and um, for troubleshooting, I would recommend the CLI for LTM. We will uh, see how uh, we do troubleshooting uh, from the CLI, uh, but later in the series, not now. So for nodes, you go to the tab called local traffic. Um, there are lots of options that you can do under local traffic, but uh, you can also create your nodes. And for pool members, you go to the option called pools. So you can create your pool members under pools. And you see that we have virtual servers here as well. So this is also something that we're going to discuss in our next lecture. Uh, and um, this is uh, another object that F5 LTM has um, and it uh, corresponds to nodes and pools as well. We have something called network map. So this is the whole topology that you have uh, when you configure your F5. So all the nodes and pools and um, redirect uh, URLs and um, virtual IPs, everything, everything is shown under the network map. So it's a complete picture of what your F5 has. Uh, then you have uh, policies, profiles, I rules for scripting. Um, you have monitors for service checking, traffic class, address translation. So lots of things, um, and there are other tabs as well, uh, which we will see later on in the series. But for now, um, for nodes and pools, uh, you go under local traffic and you configure them from these options. Lastly, we will have a look at the status icons for LTM objects. So starting with the first one, which is the green circle. So the green circle means that the object is available and online. So this is shown uh, when everything is working as expected. And um, I mean, everything is hunky-dory and you don't have to worry about anything. So this is when you get a green icon. Then we have a blue square. So this is uh, shown when the availability of an object is unknown. Now, what does that, that mean? Unknown means that the object is probably misconfigured or um, maybe the service checking for the object is failing. So that is when you get a, a blue icon for unknown objects. Then we have uh, a red diamond. Uh, this is when an object is offline or is uh, not available. Uh, for example, you have a backend server that is not reachable, it's not pinging, so you will see a red diamond. Uh, or maybe you have a server which is not open for uh, a specific port that you want to access it for. You will see uh, the object as unavailable even then. Then we, ha we have a yellow triangle. This is when the object is currently not available, but it may become available later on without any, any user intervention. Then you have these black icons. 
uh, all these black icons are related to uh, the objects being disabled so for example if you have a black circle that means that the object is available and online but you have disabled it why would you do that for example you have uh, three backend servers you want to test them uh, you want to test two out of those three you don't want the third server to be a part of this of that testing so you would disable that although that third server is also available so it will show as a black circle then we have a black diamond this is when the uh, object is unavailable or offline and you disable that object uh, this this example could be that uh, you have three servers your third server or maybe your second server goes down and you don't want uh, the requests from f5 to go to that server otherwise the users will experience uh, hiccups in in retrieving content so you would disable that out of that server uh, although um, it's unavailable uh, it's not gonna uh, uh give anything back to the user but you will disable it so that the uh, requests for f from f5 to backend servers don't go to the server that is down so the users won't experience any any um, outage at their end then we have a black square this is again uh, uh, the same as the blue square where, where the object is unknown but you disable the object so it turns into a black square so all these black icons are related to when you disable objects depending upon their availability or unavailability then we have uh, these gray icons um, so the gray icons are uh, related to those objects which have dependency on other objects so for example if a parent ob object has been disabled uh, you would see a gray icon or maybe the other object is uh, unavailable or offline that is related to your object which is uh, shown as gray uh, um, in the status column so all in all uh, i would say that these top three you would see most of the times uh, in common scenarios on an f5 device and obviously uh, the black ones you need uh, to be wary of because um, there are instances where you need to disable your objects uh, depending upon the upon the circumstances so uh, this brings us to the end of this second session uh, in the next session what i'll do is uh, i'll discuss the virtual ips only and then we will jump on to the uh, other topics like uh, load balancing techniques and ssl offloading and um, uh, address translations monitoring etc so we will we'll see what we have in our upcoming lectures but the next lecture will be definitely on virtual IPs. Uh, I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for going.